Why is the two-door Monaro so popular here in Australia? And why is this car so famous? Welcome to the 2018 Holden Monaro Nationals. Let's check out some awesome Monaros. Jesse here is the chief organiser of the Monaro Nationals and what a great day it's been. You're pretty happy with it? Yeah mate, absolutely stoked. Yeah. Uh, we've had probably two and a half thousand people through the gate. That's amazing. 200 cars on the oval. Yeah. Sun's out and everyone's happy. Yeah. Good. And, and the good part about it, Jesse, is the feedback we're getting from people that are from, say, Melbourne, Victoria, Western Australia, South Australia. Yep. They're just loving Tassie, yeah, which is great, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's what we want. You know, there's a lot of them that are here for three weeks plus. Yeah, that's you know, they've it. They've made a holiday out. It's a pretty expensive venture. Yep. Uh, one of them have um, they come over here, they're going to store their cars, they're going to hire a car, travel that's the state. That's what we want. So thanks for joining us here in Tassie, Richard. He's got a great HZ Monaro here. What a great car. Tell us a little Thank bit you. about it. Yeah, it's a HZ GDS. Yes. Five litre, four speed car. Yeah. Uh, it's a December 1977 build. So it's a limited edition. Yeah, there wasn't too many GDSs made. No. Yeah, 1,430 odd. And the honeycomb yeah. wheels, they look fantastic, yeah, don't you gotta, they? You've got to have those. Yeah. <laughs> got a stereo in it, does it? Yeah, yeah, so, good stereo. And what's your favourite yeah. driving song? Uh, just any of the 70 classics. Any of the 70s, yeah, like the sweet. That's what you have when you've got to drive it. Bit of glam rock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you love driving around with your arm out the window, do yeah, you? Yeah, that's how it is. We always tend to get that arm sunburn a little bit more than the other yeah. one, don't we? Yeah. So the car is uh, stock standard, is it? Has it had Pretty any work at all? stock as a rock. Yeah. Uh, complete restoration. Yeah. So we stripped back to a bare shell. How long nothing. did it take you to restore it? I did it pretty quick, yeah. which was about just over three years. Yeah. Which is pretty quick. In the bottom of so, pit too, aren't they, as far as money's concerned? Yeah, we won't talk about that. No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a lot of Monaro widows getting around here too, by the way. I, I picked up a bit of a tip someone said to yeah. me earlier on. They get these projects and go into the shed and uh, spend hours and hours in there. But you're lucky enough to get a bit of a hand from your brother, I hear. Uh, least, the least I listen to him, the better, really. <laughs> He's trying to take all the credit. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Now Tim's got an awesome car here, a 1968 HK that raced at Bathurst. How good is it to have this car in your possession? Oh look, I consider myself very fortunate to yeah. have got it and when I saw it advertised I thought I've got to have this, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. If I don't jump on it now, so, I never will. So when did you buy it? About four years ago. About four years ago? And yeah. does it spend its times in museums and stuff like that? No, absolutely not. It's a driver. My son and I drove it from Melbourne to Sydney in June. and That's what it's, it's all about. Beauty. You've got to drive these things, don't you? Yep. So how did the HK Monaro go back there in Bathurst? They won the event awesome. and they came second and third, yeah. but this car broke a wheel and was disqualified. Okay, yeah, well it really put the Monaro on the map, didn't it really? Well it then? did, it was unexpected that it would win because yeah. Ford had won the year before and already yeah. had some runs on the board yeah. and it was a brand new thing for Holden. Thanks for your time, enjoy your That's time right. Tassie. Thank you. So here's Ruth here, she's at the Holden Monaro show, enjoying yourself today? I certainly am, yeah. it's great. Yeah, it's amazing, brings back a lot of memories, doesn't it? It does, haven't seen cars like this for many years, no. it takes me right back. So I have Mark here, he's from Victoria, he's brought over his beautiful HG Monaro, tell us a bit about it. Thanks Danny, uh, yeah we well, looked last Thursday, uh, yes. we uh, had the car ready to uh, bring across to the Nationals, Yeah. on its way to get a wheel alignment and uh, some gentleman on a phone wasn't concentrating and uh, totaled the front of the car. Oh no, really? Yeah, yeah. so uh, we practically spent six days pulling the whole front off and rebuilding it. And, so uh, it smashed the whole front of the yeah, car in? Guard, bonnet, uh, oh my bumper goodness. bar, grill, the whole front. And uh, lucky enough we got parts from Sydney on the, in the air and uh, we arrived this morning, Saturday morning, on the boat. Oh and my. the car's here. 
the car I'm, is here, they're all together. <laughs> I reckon. So you got a bit of help from some locals? I'm very, very uh, lucky to have a couple of good mates in the panel beating business, and uh, we had a couple of 12, 12 midnight nights. Well, we really appreciate the effort you've gone to to get the car here, uh, to put it on display here today. Wow, what a story. Thank you. So this is Ziggy from Victoria. He's flying the Monaro flag with a really interesting car today. Uh, tell us all about this LE, well, which once was an LE Monaro. Yeah, mate. that's right. I uh, bought it in 1982. Yes. It cost me three thousand two hundred dollars. That's in the olden days, in the eighties. Yeah. And uh, we bought it specifically to cut it up. I had two of them. Why did you want to cut it up? For work. Right. You just wanted to be practical, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I've got, a, I've got a different roof rack for this. So yeah. Very steel, plaster, timber, whatever. Yeah. So I can do my work. Oh, that is awesome. So it's a seventy-six model, is that 76. right? Seventy-six. HX. And the back end of it is what is that off a what, like a one a ton or something? Van. The panel van. Panel the, van. What an interesting vehicle the this is. Panel yeah. van back cost me forty bucks. Yeah? I tell you what, it's a big draw card. A lot of people stop and have a look at it, don't Everybody they? Everybody does. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Well thanks very much for showing us around your yeah. uh, uh LA Monaro Ute sedan. Yeah. Something. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Dave from Sydney here with a beautiful car. It's a HQ 71 model, and I tell you what, it is tough. Now, your car is heavily modified, mate. A little uh, bit. What's the donk? So the engine, <laughs> we've got a um, small block. Uh, it's a 400 dart block. It's out to 427. Wow. Um, we've got a full jezel drivetrain. Yeah. Uh, sorry, valve train in it. Yep. And uh, basically, we've got it out to 866 horsepower. That's a lot. So gearbox. Gearbox, turbo 400. Uh, we built that for 1400 horsepower. It's trans brake. Uh, we've got a custom torque converter made by STE. Yep. Um, they've talked with the engine builder, come up with the torque curve and built it to suit. Yep. Um, the diff, we've got a, um, a sheet metal diff, 9 inch. Uh, it's got a wave track centre, 35 spline axles. Yep. Wheels are um, 18 by 8s on the front. And she's 18... tubbed out at the back there? Yep. Yep. Tubbed out, um, 18 by 10s on the back. Yep. Um, so yeah. was this a project that you stripped down and did for nothing and... 100%, yeah. yeah. So this was one of my dad's friends, he owned a speed shop up in Gunnada. Yeah. He used to be one of Jim Reed's mechanics. Sat in a shed for 20 years. It's an original LS Monaro. Yep. 350 Chev engine, yep. so... How long did it actually take you to, to get it to this? Two and a half years. Two, that's not, yeah. that's not bad. bad. Now this car, it hasn't got a stereo. No stereo. And the reason why? Because the engine sounds so good. And doesn't it? You yeah. cannot beat the sound of a Holden V8. No, it sounds great. <laughs> it sounds great. So, enjoying the car show today, mate? No, oh, absolutely loving it. It's a beautiful day and heaps of beautiful cars. Um, what, what don't you enjoy yeah. when you come to these sort of things? Man's heaven. So, I'd just like to make sure my hair is right. <laughs> Arthur's got a hat on, he's from Victoria. <laughs> and this Monaro is what it's all about, people celebrating 50 years, 1968, the HK Monaro, the genuine item. Tell us a bit about it, Arthur. Well, uh, I bought it about uh, 2006, yes. uh, in a bit of a sad state, um, parked it up for about five, six years, and as money allowed, uh, yeah, we started the rest about six years ago. Yeah. Uh, finally finished the car about a year, year and a half ago, uh, for my daughter and uh, my son-in-law, Cat and Ryan's wedding, and uh, yeah, and here we are, and uh, we've taken this uh, wonderful opportunity to come to Tasmania to celebrate the 50 years of the Monaro, the HK Monaro. And we so, welcome you to this great state yes, as well. You guys are very accommodating. And oh, we done, love you coming to the great you've state. Done, you've done a very good job. <laughs> uh, uh, it's very well organised. Now, how many hand is this car? I mean, are you the second owner, third owner, no, tenth no, owner? No, I've traced the uh, history back to the original owner, and yeah. I'm probably the sixth owner. So, and yeah. was it uh, derelict in a yard somewhere, or a barn, or Look, something like that? Look, I bought it from a gentleman uh, in Tamworth, in yeah. New South Wales. Uh, his name's Craig Foster, a, yeah. a, a wonderful person. Yeah. Uh, he bought the car in, uh, I think he said, 87, and he just parked it up. He didn't touch it and then decided to sell it at uh, 2006 along I came along and uh, it was a bit of a sad state but it wasn't yeah. as bad when we stripped it all down it was pretty good uh, for, what, for, for its age and you so, absolutely love it Arthur mate uh, the best thing about it is uh, grabbing my wife or friend yep. or my 
daughters or my yeah. son-in-laws and just going for a drive, oh, the, feeling, the, oh. the feeling, the feeling, the <laughs> feeling, uh, unless you're in it, you can't explain it, can Correct. you, Arthur? That's it. There's a lot of nice cars here and it's a credit to everyone. Car people understand the passion, they do, what, goes, they do. what goes, how much work and effort <laughs> goes into things. So we'll have a great time cars. in Tassie, Arthur. Thanks, Danny. Thank you very much. No worries. Well, I hope you're enjoying the whole Monaro Nationals and it's really good to see that local businesses are backing this event. So I've got Luke here at Motors Holden Launceston. Uh, he's the sales manager here and plenty of interest in this whole Monaro, Luke. Look, Danny, it's been fantastic. Um, a friend of mine actually approached us yeah. um, a couple of, oh, probably two months back and just mentioned that the uh, Monaro show was on. Yeah. And, um, and obviously I jumped at the chance to get, uh, oh, for sure. to get the HQ two-door in the show. And, and you had a few through the door just to look at the car? Well, we're always hoping to get more through the door. But yeah. We've had plenty of, we've had plenty of interest uh, in, in a lot of our new cars. But yeah, also, yeah. Um, a lot of people in taking photos yeah. and uh, yeah, and touching the feel of the Monaro, which has been great. So, so why is this car so famous? Well, we're lucky enough today to have the original owner. So let's try and catch up with him. So a Sunday night in Tasmania in 1975, it was a drizzly old night, uh, around about 9pm I think it was. Uh, Frank was driving over the Tasman Bridge in Hobart and unfortunately the MV Lake Illawarra took out a couple of pylons and Frank was lucky enough to survive because this car was actually rocking on the edge. Check out the photos. So Frank, what was it like on that night? We uh, just travelled along and we've seen the, the lights went out on the bridge itself. Yeah. But uh, then I seen a set of tail lights. Yeah. And next thing, I thought it was an accident. So yeah. I eased down. Yeah. Probably from 70, probably down to 50. Next thing we spotted the white line missing. Oh my goodness. And the missus said to me, stop, stop. I said, I can't. I said, too bloody late. Oh, no. And then when we went over, she said, put her in reverse. I said, no, out. Oh, you want to get out? I, I said, oh, out. Frank, I could not begin to imagine what it was like. On, on th that would be just oh, some crap. scary stuff. So 43 years on, you're still here to tell the story. And what a great story it is. And, and kept the car. Yeah. I tell you what, Frank, you're more famous than what the car is. I see you sign an autograph. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Well, thanks for spending the time with us today. And thank you so much for bringing along such a famous car. Here's Jim from South Australia at the show and shine for the Holden Monaro. It's a great day here at Windsor Park in Launceston, Northern Tasmania. It is a show and shine, but unfortunately this car is not shining today. Jim, better tell us the story. Well, basically I was only a few hours coming off the uh, boat here yep, at uh, Spirit of Tasmania. Spirit, Spirit of Tasmania um, at, uh, just coming from Devonport. Yep. We're doing a bit of a tour with a couple of friends in other Monaros. Yes. And we're going down the uh, Frankfurt Highway when um, uh, basically what happened, the uh, was going around a right hand bend and all of a sudden the tail just started to flick out So and, all right. of a, and I thought, geez, this is a bit strange, I wasn't even going fast, so I quickly tried to correct it by steering it towards the skid yeah. and then eventually what happened is that then the car suddenly snapped its tail around the other way and spun about nearly 360 degrees, oh my goodness. Hit, hit the pole. So I just held on to dear life thinking, oh, hang on, where am I going now? Yeah. I was basically a passenger once I started skidding. Yeah. And now, were you by yourself, were you, Jim? I was. Fortunately, my oh, girls were yeah. flying in from Adelaide, so... And uh, you're okay? I'm in one piece, th thankfully. That's the main part. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It could have yeah. been a lot worse. Yeah. So once it hit the light pole, then it kept spinning off the road and then it landed in a ditch. So unfortunately, the car 
apart from being banged up, it's yeah. actually quite dirty. So, uh, well, I'm glad you and, and your family are safe. Thank um, you. Uh, it's not a real good welcome to Tasmania, but no. <laughs> welcome to Tassie. Thank but you. Can I say a big hats off to you for uh, bringing your car along today? Thank you. I think it sort of highlights the fact that even though we love these cars and that, uh, we have to be safe in these things, don't we? Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's it's you as a person, your passengers yeah. are the most important. Cars exactly. can be replaced, they can be repaired. Um, yes, it's a pride and joy, you know, I've had it for a long time and it, it's a car that was in fantastic condition. But at the end of the day, I was lucky, I hit probably the strongest part of the car which allowed yeah. me to sort of walk out of it. So, so you're going to stay in Tassie for long? Yes, we're staying. We, we put the, oh, all right, our plans have changed a little bit, yeah. but we've organised some alternative transport Yes. and we'll be staying as per plan for another week. Well, I hope the people here in Tassie look after you, Oh, mate. look, the, uh, from the moment we've landed here, uh, the locals, the, all the Tassie people are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, we love you guys and, you know, Although I'll have that sad part of the trip, the fact is that the rest of the stay here have been yeah. fantastic. Everyone's been so supportive, understanding. Yeah. So thank you very much, Tasmania. Rod from Queensland here, he's got a beautiful Monaro. And I'll tell you what's quite bright in the eyes as well. Tell us all about it, mate. Got it about 16 years ago. Yeah. Um, didn't work on it for about um, until about six years ago. Yep. Took back the metal. Uh, tried to do absolutely everything myself. So yeah. I wanted to paint it, even though I'm not a painter. Yeah. I wanted to do the drivetrain. And a great job of the paint too, by yeah, the way. Thanks. I had a, a very limited budget. Yeah. So a lot of it is secondhand parts polished. There's yeah. no new chrome. No new door handles, yeah. it's all been polished by hand just to try and make it but, look new. But isn't that uh, what it's all about though? It is. Be because then you're, yeah. you're part of that car. Now, for people who are watching this today, probably think, those two guys there are crazy. You yeah. know, you become part of it as well. It is. And like, I've always loved cars and I'm a mechanic by trade. Yeah. And um, I've got an absolute passion for motorsport. I've got yep. an absolute passion for street machines, yeah. hot rods. And I love all models and makes. Yeah. It just happens to be that Monaro's are at the top of the tree. And aren't they great? And I'll tell you what, this has got a fair donk underneath the bonnet, I can tell you. What it's is um, it? Well, okay, it's a, it's a 350 cubic inch Vortec. Oh, so yeah. Vortec is a Chevy truck motor. Okay. So roller yeah. cam, four bolt mains, very wow. tough and strong. Yeah. Not high revving, huge yeah. torque. Yeah, right. So about 400 foot pound of torque. Should really be in a truck by the sound of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But because of that too, I can yeah. drive it at very low revs and get great yeah. economy. Yeah. So this thing gets very good economy yep. with a five speed transmission, high ratio differential. Awesome. Do you come to a lot of these events? Do you show your car off a lot? Or? I'm not big on shows, even yeah. though I do go. Yeah. Um, I'm, we're from the Monaro Club of Queensland, yeah. and um, yeah. I, I love coming here because you've got everyone from every state, and all the different cars, yeah. and all the different fantastic colours, yeah. and everyone you talk to has got a different story, but yeah. they've all got passion. And like you said earlier on to me, that uh, every car here is different, every car's got a different story, but everybody together, we've got one common interest yeah. and a yeah. passion, and we like just getting together and talking about our cars. It's an we? excuse to get together and have yeah. you know, Without the people, yeah. there's nothing. That's right, exactly. You know, so yeah. the cars are an excuse to meet all the other dudes yeah. and have a yarn to them and their wives and their families. There's a lot of kids here. Yeah. Um, it's it's cool. And whether you're on the barge coming over on the Spirit of Tasmania or whether you're off yeah. at another town like you know, one of the local small towns, it doesn't matter where you go, you've got people to talk to and have a That's yarn. That's right, yeah. Here's Trev from Western Australia. He's got a great beard and a great <laughs> car and even a, a top to match his car. Yeah. I finally found an HT Monaro. Tell us a bit about it, mate. Um, yeah, it was a 1969 model. Yep. Um, we went to Tasmania. Yep. Um, it was made in Fisherman's Bend yeah, in right. Melbourne. A local car. Great. A local car made in Melbourne. Yep. Um, we saw it advertised on, well, I saw it advertised on eBay. Yep. I said to the wife, hey, want to buy a Monaro? And she said, yep, so we flew uh, over to New Zealand for the weekend. Yeah, right, okay. And uh, then um, brought it back home to Ausland. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Now, what's under the bonnet, mate? Um, it's a 350 Chevy under the bonnet, mildly yep. worked, a little bit of a, what I call a girl's late motor. It's yes. easy to drive. Easy to drive. Sounds okay. It's, um, it's got a 350 turbo in it. Yes. Um, automatic, it's meant to have a two-speed glidematic in it. Yep. 
but that was already converted when we got it, so yeah, it's right. a nice conversion, it's, uh, it's okay. So in the restoration of this car, what, what did you base it on? Was there something you based it on, the look? Um, once we found out it was Phantom Purple, yeah. that's the colour of the paint, um, then both wife and I were interested in the Phantom anyway. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. For a long early age. Yeah. Uh, so we based the car around the Phantom and we've got oh, a bit of a great. Phantom theme happening with a few little paint jobs and scuff plates. The sign, the uh, storyboard. Yeah, there's a lot of um, detail you put into this car. Yeah, it's really no, good. No. Exhaust tips as well. You know, so we quite try to give it that phantom look. It's a real head turner, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, this is uh, Mitch. You tell me. Yep. And um, who supplied the money for this car? That's what um, I want to know. I, I think my work supplied it to me, and yeah. then I gave it to her boyfriend. I call it her boyfriend. Uh, <laughs> I, I give him that much money. So, that, you know, are you one of these Monaro wives that are getting around? Like you never saw him for like a couple of years uh, when he was no. rebuilding it, or no, what? We both had input, and uh, it was really, really good. Ah, uh, well, enjoy yourself here in Tassie. No, yes, we will. Sure and um, will. fantastic weather, fantastic yeah. island yeah. people. Yeah. Good show. Yeah. Can't Excellent. Wait. Absolutely. You're Thank beauty. You. Winner. <laughs> <Wee. laughs> well, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed the 2018 Holden Monaro Nationals. And have you checked out the boots on this one? Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, see you later.